Welcome back to the part 2 of the AI Top Atom series. In the first video, we've unboxed the system, tested the basics and talked about who it's designed for. Today, we're going to go much deeper. This part is all about real use, practical setup, integrations, day-to-day -day flexibility and how it compares to my existing 3090 server. The first thing that stood out to me was how manageable the whole setup was, even if you're not a developer. NVIDIA provides step-by-step -step guides for huge lists of tools. All you need to do is copy and paste commands to install things like Confi UI, Open Web UI, Olama, Cursor, and various dev toolkits, even full pipelines and frameworks. I really enjoy experimenting with tech, but I'm not someone who spends all day writing code. So I approach this from a perspective of a normal user who wants things to work without a steep learning curve. And up to this point, I've not yet needed to use a single command. Let me show you what I mean. I installed NVIDIA Sync on the PC. This lets me control the AI Top Atom over the network. This means that the box can be placed anywhere and only needs power and either Wi-Fi or LAN. For testing, I placed it on my desk about one meter away, which probably is how most developers will use it in a tight workspace. It runs quietly, stays mildly warm at idle and heats up when pushed, but never to the point where it draws any attention. When I logged into the dashboard, it immediately prompted me to update the software. I simply click through and let it do everything. No terminal required at all. Everything was done through the UI. Then I followed the NVIDIA copy paste guides to install VS Code Server, Open Web UI on the custom port, as well as Olama. All from fresh install with no tweaks or troubleshooting. The guides made it easy to start even if you usually avoid terminals. For anyone used to Windows or Mac, this reduces the intimidation factor by a lot. Now let's talk about flexibility. This is where Atom starts to make sense for people who want to build workflows. The easy to set up integrations like Cursor and VS Code are available straight out of the box. I actually set up VS Code and did some of my own home assistant development for home automation. It is nice that you can open folders on the machine, run scripts, manage environments and even use the extensions normally. I installed OpenWebUI and Olama using the NVIDIA guides instead of the Gigabytes utility to show how flexible the platform is. Unlike Gigabyte's AI utility, which only does one model at a time, I could download several models in parallel. Very convenient when you need multiple LLMs and vision models ready for testing. Since I'm not a developer, it's hard to show the deep value of these tools in a professional workflow. But the real value is having a stable environment, a huge unified memory pool for large models, full NVIDIA software stack, clear documentation that makes following guides straightforward, the ability to run several workloads at once, and most importantly, keeping your data and code private. With all of this, you're not fighting with your hardware or juggling VRAM limits. You focus on building and that is the value. As compared to our 3090 server, we definitely had quite a few issues there. Now let's talk practical sense. Since I already set up OpenWebUI and Alama and downloaded a bunch of models, I can launch everything in the browser or even through my home assistant automations. For example, Hey Jarvis, turn off studio lights. Turned off the light. Hey Jarvis, turn on studio lights. Turned on the light. It's a simple test but it just demonstrates what you can do at home without any internet connection. When it comes to performance, when I use smaller models that fit inside my 3090 server's VRAM, the 3090 is still faster. On average, it's about 30 to 40% ahead. Where the Atom produces around 50 tokens per second, the 3090 sits closer to 80 or 90. The difference is expected as the 3090 is a large dedicated GPU with high bandwidth. Where the Atom shines is running several models at once. It does not need to unload and reload models when switching tasks. Of course, for huge models like GPT OSS 120 billion parameter model, the Atom manages between 30 to 45 tokens per second, while my server errored out, demanding I assign massive amount of system memory. This is the advantage of unified memory rather than a strict VRAM limit. The box can support several workloads at once, functioning as a local server while running AI training and inference at modest speeds. It is ultimately more suited to acting as a developing kit that mirrors the architecture and software environment of the full DGX data center systems, making it useful for prototyping and validating models locally before handing heavier jobs to the larger clusters. It is a powerful all-in-one machine that is easy to set up and generally portable if needed. 
The fixed configuration removes the upgrade complexity, which can be an advantage for developers who care more about the reliable performance than hardware tinkering. But whether you like it or not, it comes with a steep NVIDIA tax, which realistically speaking you can't do anything about. If any developers are watching, let me know how you would use the AI Top Atom and what would you like to see tested next. Thanks for watching. If you think this AI box might be what you need, check out the link below for more details. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.